Lauder, thank you very much for being our guest again today. My name is Dakbo Arua Joy. And it's two days to go, and you know what I'm talking about. That's the inauguration ceremony, the handover of, of the outgoing government uh, to the incoming government. That's the, the government of uh, President uh, Jonathan to President uh, Buhari, uh, President-elect uh, Buhari. And also, it's Thursday, uh, Children's Day. We want to wish the, the kids uh, uh, a happy celebration. Today, let me introduce my guest to you. Uh, my guest is the SA to Governor Raji Fashola. His name is also uh, Latif Raji. <laughs> He's the SA on information and strategy. Thank you very much for joining us today, my sir. My pleasure, Doctor. Oh, sir. It's been a very hectic one for Nigerians, a very hectic one of recent. Uh, it's almost done to chaos. When you have a uh, a whole nation trying to get uh, the major thing we need and the major thing that runs in the veins of the soil of this land, that is a, a petroleum product, which is a field to power the major things we need, which is our generators, our cars and everything. And with the inavailability of power also, in short, it has been almost uh, chaotic. And can you, as, as a special advisor, and advising the government that is coming in, how can we curb all this incessant uh, uh, fuel scarcity that we see often in this country? I will, I will not say a one size fits all, you know, I won't propose a one size fits all, you know, all solution. But for me, I think uh, the, the heart of the problem will be, you know, not having functional refineries in the country. Uh, secondly, again, I will say the quality of people running the affairs of the country. Those are the combined effects I think led us to this type of uh, uh, sorry situation. Mm. We found ourselves in terms of, you know, fuel supply and distribution. When, when, you know, as the sixth largest uh, oil producing nation, we don't have a functional refinery. We have to depend on other people. You see, it's like a war situation. If you are going into a war and you, de you know, depend on another source for your ammunition and uh, war materials, don't be too sure. Your opponent will not go behind you to cut off that supply. Mm. And once that supply is cut, you are exposed. And I think that is just it. It is, uh, it is something that, that an average Nigerian finds very, very ridiculous to believe. Market economy or no market economy? Why is it that we can't refine our... There was a time in this country we were exporting refined oil. Mm. How did we lose all those things? But, but, so some will argue that the refineries are there, but they are working below capacity. It is still the same. It's as good as not working. If they can't meet our expectations, then it's as good as they are not working. What is the point? I mean, these are refineries that were built over 25 years ago. How many refineries have we built in the past 10 years to kick off our expanding population? What have we done about it? Hmm. Even now, even look at it. If those refineries we talk about, the Kaduna and the Potaka and all those ones, if they are working at maximum capacity, capacity, can they actually meet the supply needs or demands today? I mean, those things were not built to cater for this huge population we have. So, somewhere along the line, we, 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 people were elected into offices or people found their way into government just left off, feeding on what already exists without actually adding anything to it. But if Wari comes in now, okay, when he comes in, it's not, uh, I know some people will say it's not rocket science building refineries. Even Buari under his administration, they had a couple of one then. And is it, it's not, an immediate thing like that. It's going to take a while. So Nigerians are going to be expecting this uh, a situation for a while before we start building refineries? No, again, 
I think uh, with the intervention of the National Assembly in the fourth issue, I think they were able to resolve some of those things. They were able to sign an MOU with the marketers. But beyond that, what for me, I think, must be the ultimate thing. I don't think Nigerians are expecting a quick fix <laughs> into our problems. There are myriads of problems in Nigeria. When you say Nigerians, uh, but, uh, not all really, because the higher percentage of Nigerians now, are, they are even eager for the handover to come, like today. Yeah. And so talking about uh, the expectancy of these people is much da even than before. I agree with you. But despite their eagerness to see this administration go, they, they, they also know that there's no quick fix to the Nigerian problem. We will have to roughen it all before we can get it. Mm. The last administration or the outgoing administration probably did not just take into consideration all the, we have forever always been impatient, always very eager for the best. And we are always eager to ask from our government the best. And it is not out of place. It is just the right of every Nigerian to, also, to always ask his government for the best, the best performance. But one thing I'm seeing is that like we have said, even if Buhari gets there on Friday and announce I'm going to be, they will still have to do a lot of spread work. Mm. So it's not going to be a quick fix thing. But in the meantime, I believe there will be a, 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 a shop, you know, a stopgap mayor that will cushion this type of uh, 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 excruciating uh, a okay. situation mm. we found us. And what's your own take? What, what's your take on subsidy removal, like the NLC is saying that uh, they are against uh, subsidy removal, but uh, most of the people are saying, oh, why, why should there be subsidy? It's the greatest fraud of all time. Yeah, because you see again, for me, before you talk about subsidy removal, you must be able to come clean and tell me actually how much it costs to produce one liter of petroleum product. That is when you can talk to me about subsidy. And again, you can't talk to me about subsidy when um, you don't refine the, the petroleum. You can't talk about subsidy when you have not made adequate provision for how to move this product from wherever in Nigeria at the cheapest and easiest means possible. We can't continue like my principal say, there is a yard in Apapa than, you know, where the railway that used to take fuel can travel. Yes. The rail we track is still there. The, mm. We abandoned stops like that and concentrated on moving fuel by tanker. When, when you know, at the height of this fuel uh, crisis, over 6,000 tankers were jam-packed on just one local government, on Apapa. And we saw what happened. Which country? I've never seen a country that would survive that way. We have a lot of pipelines spread across this country that were supposed to distribute all these stuffs and make it easier. What happened? So when you want to talk about subsidy, we need to factor all these substances into it. Are there things we were not supposed to be paying for that we are paying for, and why? Because uh, let me let me chip. The, we'll talk about that, Papa. Uh, the the traffic that uh, the, the, that that happens when the trailers park on the road. But let's quickly talk about. You said if they are going to remove subsidy, the government if it's going to remove subsidy uh, or not, they need to tell us what is happening. How much is it that uh, it's going to cost to produce a liter? Was that the problem that happened? Do you remember uh, the uh, the. The, when uh, President Gulo Jonathan uh, resumed the uh, position as the president of this country, and do you remember the, the, the Occupy Lagos protest and everything? Because most of the people that were part of that protest, I had one-on-one -on -one with them, and they are now saying it is even good to remove this subsidy. If fuel is going to cost 150, let it cost 150. You don't mind paying. Is it because of this lack of communication or the communication gap between the federal government and the people of Nigeria. Was that why people went on the streets then? Because they did not know the essence of that subsidy remover then? Let me, let me see one thing. For as long <clears throat> as we don't really address. You see, I, see, I just spoke to you about a war situation. Mm. 
that if you are fighting a war and you don't protect your source of supply, you know, for harm supply and everything, and you have to depend exclusively on, you, you know, it's enough for you to lose the war. Mm. Now, this issue of fuel, you know, fuel subsidy or something, for me, I think we have not really addressed it. We have not addressed it in the sense that there are so many infrastructure that we could have, and I mean, he, he has been there now for six years. Mm. That's when you are referring to. Yes. What did we do to ensure that fuel is refined in Nigeria? Mm. There was a time in the history of this country when we don't, when we don't even have these experiences. When did we start having the experiences? What happened? What caused it? There was a time fuel was selling for six cobble in Nigeria. It was a gradual increase that they don't want to pay for subsidy, that they were doing it. For me, I don't think we should debate that. Here. We, we have not got there that if they want to remove the subsidy, remove it. They want to sell it. When you want to sell, if, uh, see, those people agitating that they should sell for 150 naira so that it's available. How many Nigerians have they you know, sat down to look at the spiraling effect of that type of a decision? Mm. Why did people go out on the street? When the when when uh, the present administration increased it, it was because people cannot afford it, and still Nigerians still find it very difficult to still understand why they have to pay so much for petroleum. So that's why the lack of the gap uh, the gap of communication came in then. No, the, 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 you know, I don't I don't think so. But were they really willing? Is it not arbitrary? Because it's it was arbitrary that we're going to you know some few people will gather. I say, look, you don't need this subsidy. Remove it. You have subsidy. But there is no country in the world that does not serve its people with, in one form of subsidy or the other. Hmm. When, you, when, when, they, when they pay you know, the actual price for their petroleum, they probably get refund on their health bills. They probably get refund on their education bill and so many other things. This issue of subsidy cannot be taken as a total. We need to, we need to come, because if we stay on that, we will definitely not come back to Lagos, because we need to talk about Lagos. And talking about this fuel scarcity also, of recent, you, maybe you read when Achese uh, said, uh, the, the president of Nopeng was saying that uh, part of the problems of this fuel scarcity was the drastic measures taken to remove those tankers from that place within that short period of time this stipulated time you should have given them a little uh, time uh, to inclusive you see again that is one institution nigerians really need to address the fuel tanker they have become an institution on their own you don't combine service with lawlessness hmm. And in any society that uh, where law and order is, I know, is uh, absent, what you find next is chaos and a result to jungle tactics. Why were they asked to, you know, why were they asked to move their tankers away from there? The tankers were right on the highway. You, the, what, what they are doing is doing business. They are in business. But they are back again there. They are back, according no, to... Again, yeah. again, the first solution, it is, going to, it is something all Nigerians will have to address. Now, they are in business. This is TVC. TVC is a business. But because TVC, you can't use it to hurt me. Mm. Mm. You, you, you know, it should be a society where Nupeng does his business. And myself as a, 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 a cab driver, a taxi driver, also draws my business. Mm. If I'm a journalist, I can have access to my office without the tanker actually disturbing me. If I have an office on a papa, I, I should be able to access my office without the tanker disturbing me. When they said it was that drastic action, now, so many infrastructure were at risk. 6,000 tankers converging in just one spot. Do you have provision for where they should be? You see, we did. We tried a long time ago. Under the administration of actually, but a, a park was created for them. But with so many bickerings, they, they, they find it very difficult to, to, 
to even look at issues and say, look, this is a very good issue. It, this is Lagos. The most prized asset of this state is its land. If the, go if the, if the government can come up with, you know, an area and for you to develop it so that you can run your business. You are running a business. You are not... You, you see, the way, they, the way it is, it's like they believe they are doing us a favor. Mm. It is not a favor. The services they are rendering are being paid for by Nigerians. Negotiations don't actually deserve the type of uh, 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 imposed uh, tro you know, problem that they cause on them. And how do you think that you, you're going to move these people from there? They, 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 you see, they have to. They will have to. And I'm very sure common sense and, uh, and appeal will, will do the magic. Okay. We need to still continue to tell them you are in business. Don't hurt your business and don't hurt other people's business. Mm. This is okay. Now, like you just mentioned, the fuel scarcity. Everybody is affected. Everybody. Even the tanker driver himself is affected. If he's not affected by way of his truck, does he have fuel in his house? To even power his own generator? Mm. It is one way or the other, he will be affected. His wife will have to go to the market to, go, to get food for the children. So we need to all look at this issue and start addressing them for exactly what they are. Okay. And a, a lot to talk about. You, you, you know, Lagos is the commercial nerve center of this country. Uh, home Not only to, of this country, yeah. now in the sub Sahara, sub -sub -Sahara you know, yeah. our West African region. And home to multinationals, home to many things or many com companies. And again, I know uh, your principal, uh, Governor Rajiv Ashula, uh, the administration really uh, focused on different, uh, uh, different uh, aspects or different, uh, yeah, aspects. And uh, majorly, they, they, they concentrated on that path, uh, which is the power, agriculture, Transport, transportation, and housing. and housing. Let's talk of, about power. It's a bigger, a greater issue, uh, we're talking about power. And Lagos, I will talk about power, who of recent, with the, with the state of power, because some people are saying it's 1,300 and something megawatts, and ahead of recent is 730 something megawatts. And Lagos definitely will be feeling the, the pains of all these. What is it that the, the, the Lagos state government, because we were talking about uh, power generation before we stepped on the podium, yeah, before the program started. And we were saying, why is it that uh, uh, most of the state uh, governments uh, don't even think about generating power by themselves? I know Lagos is trying. Can you tell, tell us more about what Lagos is doing about power generation? Yeah, well, you see, <coughs> the major issue and I think it is legislation. The, the, the statutes are full of, you know, are such that says only the federal government can generate electricity. And it's a big burden for them. Very, very big. And, uh, and I think if each state of the federation were given the opportunity to say, okay, look, we have tried. Again, I don't want to run away from the fact that it is connected to national security. I don't know, and I mean, I don't want to, this forum will be too small for us to discuss it, but there is nothing that says each state should generate its electricity. Mm. Others will now move faster than the other. If Lagos was able to generate enough electricity for its president, it, you know, in two years, it might take on those states three years, it might take Oshun five years, but definitely everybody will have a blueprint. And I think one of the major problems too is that the sector too is not so transparent. Until the recently, power sector. Yeah. Until recently, when uh, we started, you know, giving out, uh, they started selling out distribution channels to 
you know, some few people that we just did. No, no, we did not know how many. No, we cannot even account for the number of transformers that we have. Mm. So, you see, for the Lagos state government, behind, you know, to, you know, the industrialization concept cannot take off without a functional and adequate supply of electricity. But, but you, it but, is but, also okay. hindered by the policy that says you cannot generate you know, you know, electricity for commercial quantity. Mm. But, okay. but, but does, that, does that even affect, you know, the Lagos State government is doing this rural electrification uh, project. And I know uh, even the solar panels, how much was it again? Uh, I know you, 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 Lagos is generating like five megawatts already, maybe more than that, uh, from rural electrification and talking about solar. solar. Is, does it, does it uh, how... That, that's not for commercial uh, purpose, right? Yeah, you are not for commercial purposes. We're using those solar uh, power thing in our hospitals, our health facilities, and in our schools. schools. They are not commercial purposes. What, they know what it means when they say commercial. You can't sell you to cannot sell. industries. Mm. You cannot sell to you know, you know, the residents. What we do mainly now is that our, 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 our you know, power that we generate are now targeted at ensuring that public infrastructures are up. And we power most of our street lights there from our, our independent power you know, stations. Mm. We started it from Akute, from our you know, water works in Ijo and Akute, you know, you know, with about 20.5 megawatts from there. We've done the one on Lagos Island that powers the general hospital power the state house marina so they have light the, all the time now yeah they have mm. light it's been functional the secretariat in allows us to has its own dedicated power plant the lagos state uh, uh teaching hospital last week also has its own power the, the lagos state high court the police barrack and institutions there along that as is and they are powered by the lagos state uh, independent power they think there you know, situated in that area. Mm -hmm. So for us, it is taking the public institution, and the public institutions are the biggest uh, service provider. So, and uh, when they run efficiently, when they run maximally, this, the, the, the residents are, are, are the better for it. Mm -hmm. So to a large extent, that's what we have just done. In fact, yesterday, the governor was at uh, the lucky free, you know, you know, free zone to commission another 12 megawatts of electricity to help that zone for its, in, you know, because the zone is designed, it's, it's an industrial complex on its own and they need a lot of electricity. So that's the first, you know, phase mm. so that anybody, you know, people, companies in that zone will have, on, you know, an interrupted power supply to carry out production and do their work. Are you thinking about some other means, uh like I've heard arguments about, uh, like you know the Oloshoso, the the rubbish dump, mm -hmm. uh, and some other rubbish dump uh, could be you could generate power from that uh, mm -hmm. rubbish dump, mm -hmm. and uh, some people are saying Lagos is blessed with uh, lots of water, flash flood, and why don't we channel this flood into somewhere? And we generate maybe hydro hydro power from there. There are a whole lot of means to uh, Lagos is blessed, and even with the population in Lagos, you have uh, the the waste, human waste. You could generate uh, a lot of power from that also. Um, yeah, I agree with you, but I think what we are doing, you know, with Folusos in the end, is uh, probably tapping the gas. That is, uh, you know, more. And I've told you this power generation. What is the point in generating power that you can't, you can't, you can't even commercialize? commercialize? Don't forget, at the start of this democratic uh, uh, ex you know, experience, this is our je democratic journey in 1999, the government of Lagos State brought in what they call the Enron badges with the capacity to supply 270 megawatts of electricity. And when they were conceptualizing that, it was meant to service Lagos with an, you know, you know, with an additional second phase to be built somewhere in Marubo with 500, that will bring in about uh, 500 megawatts of electricity exclusively to Lagos. The politics and the, the legal hurdles 
when the when the 270 badges came, uh, 70 megawatt badges came, it took more than a year before they could complete on the, its usage. Mm. And when they finally started using it, they took it to the national grid, far away from even Lagos that conceptualized it. And at the end of the day, they started taxing Lagos, billing Lagos almost 240 or 270 million naira every wow. month wow. for light it did not use for just bringing in those so you can see even the old style legislation the old style political has put the country you know a state like lagos at risk so how do we how do we break that jinx do we have to touch that legislation that we that there's a proper need yeah, to. A, 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 a very very forward-looking administration uh you know in tandem with the with the National Assembly, who make a lot of things happen in Nigeria. Okay, as as, as we talk about uh, as we talk about uh, the outgoing government, uh, since we're talking about power now, and uh, let's talk about the incoming government in Lagos. That's Ambody's uh, uh, government. What areas should they be looking at now when we talk about power generation? I know we cannot commercialize it, but at least we could still power the the the, the schools. Uh, the, the hospitals and whatever, uh, what have you, uh, we could still power those ones. What advice are you going to give the incoming government uh, talking about power? You see, um, Hambody was elected governor on the, on the strength of continuity. And I am very sure a template already exists in Lagos from 1999 till now. It will only it will build and improve on the template. Template. Yeah. On the issue of power, I, I'm very sure and I'm convinced that it shares the the idea that the Gushans needs to have adequate power supply. You see, and it's coming with a novel idea. It's introducing a 25 billion uh, employment trust fund. Electricity will play a crucial role in the generation of employment. Mm. So I'm very sure his thoughts cannot be further from what already exists. I just know it will, it will, it will, it will probably do it differently, it will, but it will improve on it and it will make sure that it serves more people. It has to be better. It will mm. to serve more people. Mm. And I can tell you that for free. Okay, we're still looking at that path, P A T H. That's we've talked about power now. Let's talk about our Greek. What is it that the government, uh, Governor Fashola, how can you rate uh, what he has done uh, talking about agriculture? It's, it's a massive thing. You see, there was a, before now, there was this impression that Lagos is not an agricultural community. But I think all that perception has changed. We produce the highest number of you know, eggs today. We produce the highest number of fish than, more than any other state in Nigeria. And uh, we are one of the very, very few states in this country that run a rice mill with our own party. We have our own, you know, and cultivate our cultivation field that has increased from probably about 19 hectares to over 100 hectares of cultivated field for rice. Rice. So, so much has happened. We have reorganized and reformed the, the, the way they sell meat in this state. The eco meat van, right? Yeah, yes, it has yes, come. I so many that. innovations mm, are mm, coming. Mm. So many things, you know, food and health go hand in hand. We have tried to see how much we we'll bring these two things. And I remember the abattoirs now are saying, <laughs> abattoirs of then mm -hmm. used to be a bloody, though I know we talk about blood, but bloody, when I talk about bloody, a dirty place. Very, but very now dirty. It's But a, today, they are, it's a different thing. Mm. It's different. So, you see, the issue of food is that, look, mm. there was a crisis at a particular time mm. when, I don't know, and, you know, they couldn't mm. bring in some mm. of these vegetables from the north. Mm. And it was like a panicky thing. But today, we have so many people. The government has given seed money 
has empowered a lot of people to start going into issues like this. Now look, go and grow vegetables. There are ways to sell them. Mm. We just empowered over, over 6,000 people to get involved in this food value chain. There are those people that sell egg. In fact, I met a lady who was given 50 crates of egg and was telling me, she has, and that was last week, that she now has, she now sells 150 crates of egg within the space of just two months. Wow. That she has been able to expand it. And every time she sees me, she just turns me up and says, well, look, I have, I have found that league. And, 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 and now, life has changed. And, and that is what they call me now. They call me Yaelen uh, Hexeller. Mm. When, when it's just that way. And those are just one of the thousands of people I know, that I know. are now in the market, you know, in the full value chain mm. that we are creating. You, so, and that was then when the, the federal government uh, never, like the, the incoming government, never had plans for uh, people, uh, uh, the, 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 the farmers there. Because I remember in the manifesto of APC, the government uh, will buy from the farmers. They will create, they'll create transportation, easier transportation for the farmers in the rural areas. All you have to do is just grow. We will pick them up. I will help you sell. That's what they do in almost every, 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 every advanced country. You see, there is a terminology they call food security. That food security is a very, very it's a very, very critical phenomenon. I think. Well, again, to this, it's not a type of forum mm. to you know to expose on such. But I can tell you this: that um, when a country cannot feed itself. It is worse than when it is at war. So, for the Lagos State government, be you, there are those people we call artisanal fish farmers. The Lagos State government supports them. Those ones that deal in, uh, in cash crop, you know, you know, you know, food crops, the Lagos State government supports them. Yesterday, when, when uh, the governor went to commission, the 12, the 12 megawatt uh, electricity. Yes. You also commission the an agro, an agronomy or something uh, or, or this thing there, where they manufacture herbicides. Already at the Lekki Free Zone, there is a factory that manufacture herbicides right there, and you know the meaning of this. There are some pests that does not allow the vegetables and other. Mm. To, to grow. To grow. So the moment you spread the herbicides, those things, do, and they, they, they start doing well. That is to tell you the extent to which the administration itself had gone to ensure food security. And when we talk about food security, again, because you mentioned that the incoming government, Ambody, is talking about job creation. creation. And uh, agriculture is one of the major uh, source for job creation. And when you have an incoming government that, that, that's going to benefit from the outgoing government because it's been doing well in that aspect. And now in conjunction with the federal government, so it's going to be a done deal for somebody or easier deal for somebody. Yeah, I agree, easier. But again, governance is not easy. I'm very sure, you see the challenges of, of, uh, of running a country or a state never stops. Don't be surprised that outside this, outside what we have seen, somebody will also be faced with fresh challenges that we have to tackle. Mm. They will come because that is in the nature of man and the environment. A lot of other fresh things will come up that will also test the capacity of the governor. Every other thing that is on ground already, be rest assured, those things will be maintained. And somebody will also face fresh challenges that we also that we also tackle. I know there are fresh challenges. Let's go to transportation because uh, I know your government has because uh, I know there are fifty-seven jetties 
when we talk about water transportation. water transportation. And also, there's a light rail project that's coming up. I heard it cost uh, $2.4 billion. And that's, that's, uh, it's, not, it's not flying now. The, the rail is not working now. Those are part of the things Ambody is going to meet on ground. And uh, what else, again, do you, what, when we talk about transportation, because I know they said 20 million people on daily basis move in Lagos. That's a huge sum. And they said in 2030, there will be 32 million people moving in Lagos. So the earlier, the better we start planning for this uh, transportation issue. Tell me more. Tell me latest or tell me something new that the people have not really heard about. Because I've talked about the. I know you want to talk about the rail uh, transportation, which is going to make a whole lot of journey easy. Yeah. And, and even the, the water transportation also. Yeah, we are improving on the water transportation. And um, what we're doing now presently, beyond all those ones, we, there's a, you know, a cable car that will connect uh, somewhere from the mainland to the island. Just A cable car? Yeah. It's almost completed. It's on. As soon as that one comes into it, we have. There is a, there is a plan to also still dredge some part of the lagoon to accommodate larger vessels mm -hmm. and larger boats. So many plans are on. That is why I said there are so many things that, you know, are scratch on the surface. When somebody comes in, it will scratch deeper. So that's why continuity pays. That is why it pays. Because there are so many things. When you look at the new real deal on the red line, it's been on for a very long time, but they just succeeded in signing now. But the blue, you know, the blue rail mm. that comes from, you know, um, Okokomaiko that will go to Marina, when you go to that axis, you will see all those big beams where the train will be following to get to all those areas. When you watch very well, you will see the, the train terminals springing up. Mm. See, all these things, maybe we've completed about four of them, and they are supposed to be about 11 on that corridor. Ambody has still got a lot of work to do. Mm. It's got to complete all those things. So, we, you know, it's a multi, for us, the transport sector is multi, uh, uh, it's a multi-dimensional one. Transport, uh, we, we are building a, 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 an airport and a seaport in Lekki. Those are part of all those things that will make Lagos a better place to live. And the BRT. And the, the BRT mm. scheme will still run. Now, let me explain how already we've given out licenses. The government just wants to provide the infrastructures. The private sector should be the people that will do it. I will admit to that. So far, we have not seen so much seriousness from the private sector. Those that got licensed are yet to roll out, you know, very well, you know, and take charge of the routes. But I think with time, the land transportation business is fraught with a lot of irregularities, irregularities mm. presently. Mm. But again, we have made some advances. We have made a lot of gains. When the uh, my 12 Ikorodu road is completed, it will serve again as another model of how to run an efficient public transport system. It's just there. But, the jetties but, mm. that have been completed, they've gone to use. The few ones that you know we need to just put finish. By the time those jetties now start functioning, you know, led by the private sector too, they will bring in a lot of good boats. Mm -hmm that will have to run on our waters, boats that will be safer, that we instill confidence in our people and encourage them to ride on those and on when, the waterways. When we talk about irregularities when it comes to land transportation, you know the major headache of Lagosians is the attitude of the downfall drivers. They are the major problems on Lagos roads. And yeah. that's why you have travel. I'm telling you, it's experience. I've experienced it. When you get to, when you're going to Ojota from Ikorodu, 
They are the major problems. That's why you have traffic on that road. When you're going to Ikorodu itself, on the other side, they are the major problems. And when you're going to Bega, a lot of places I don't want to mention. And I don't know, is it, is it, have they been a pain in the neck of this government also? And will they be the pain in the neck of Ambo's government? Because they refuse if they to leave. If they are a pain in the neck of Dakwaru Ajui, mm. a citizen and resident of Lagos, definitely anything that affects you affects the government. Let me tell you, um, situations like this, you just don't rush to solutions. The solutions have been gradual and coming. They have been there, but the solutions keep coming gradually. It's one step at a time. Don't forget that the legal state government also established about five or six uh, uh, drivers' institute. Yes, I remember. It is meant to train and retrain these people. Again, Studies have shown that these small capacity buses are not what we need in Lagos. We need our capacity buses to move our people. Can I quickly take our first caller? Uh, Yakub is calling from Dokbemu. Good morning, Yakub. Good morning, for a long time. Yeah, a long time, Yakub. Yeah, in the course of this, uh, how I played it. <laughs> I do understand. Is, uh, but let me start from where you stop now. You said earlier that uh, downfall people problem of I could have had the gentleman in the studio there that uh, this present government, eh, what is it been about at the real issue? Not only downfall. You, you can imagine a downfall driver that's working from money to 10 o'clock. At the end of the day, he has a little amount of money to take home. Meanwhile, the other at the bus stop takes a huge amount of money from this same person. Mm. So you are mm. not saying that the people are causing problems. It's not really time for people. If government, if any government can do something to Agbero, yeah, guy, Agbero will always be in a garage to collect from certain money, amount of money they used to collect. Okay. Not at the bus stop. Collecting money from the downfall driver. All right then. I've been saying that quickly. Let me make one point. Please. Quickly, Jacob. Quickly. What yeah. is what is this coming government is going to do about power electricity? Why am I saying it? As I'm watching you, Jacob. Mm. I I've been I've been run generators almost a month now, and then I'm using prepaid meter. Could we believe that when I'm not going there to recharge, they will also charge me seven hundred fifty naira? You right, they're not giving me like that. They trust me of me using that same meter, which I use my money to buy. And then they will also collect money on it. Please, mm. now that APC in the federal government, APC in the state government, I need a, a simple explanation from the gentleman. Okay, okay, Jacob, you have you you've modeled them together. You have two in one now. First, let's talk about because we did talk about power generation before you came in, but we never talked about that seven hundred and fifty. Uh, Naira that's been collected from Lagosians and even Nigerians in totality. But let's quickly talk about these Agbe people. How do we eradicate them? Or eradicate well, is eradication? You see, that's one worse. thing again, again is I recollected that in 1999 there are reforms going on. The Agbe Don't forget that the Lagos uh, 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 traffic law to you know ban collection of Talk. any form of money on the highways through that uh, Lagos traffic law. Mm. Now, those people in, in white and green, or they are a creation of the National Union of Road Transport Workers. And they are the major uh, uh, owners uh, or major worker on the, uh, on the roads. Stakeholders. Uh, yes, mm. major stakeholders on, on our land transportation. Mm. But again, these are things we continue to, you know, to talk to them about every now and then. A, a society, a democratic society, yes, sometimes, if, if, if I've not done anything wrong, because when you call them Agbiru, you also, when you want to take them to court, you need people like uh, mm -hmm. Yusuf mm -hmm. to come up and say, this is what he did to me. Jacob. Jacob, that, mm. oh, this is what he did to me. This is what I saw him do. But if there are nobody coming, coming up, forth. how do you do that? We have a lot to talk about, but let's, let's quickly take a, uh, this caller from Bida in Niger State. Good morning, sir. <coughs> Mohammed. Okay, um, Mohammed. I'm no, listening no, to you, no, but there's a delay. Just continue. Okay. 
We want to contribute. I said that I want to contribute that the incoming government should do something really important on the power sector. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, let me quickly add uh, to what uh, Mohammed is saying. How is it possible? Because people think that 750 naira for the servicing of a meter that most of the people don't have is fraud on its own. How is it that it's possible for the federal government now that we have uh, a power, I mean, where you have the federal government and the state government like Lagos? Because just imagine how many millions of people pay 750 naira every month. Are we going to help the Nigerians to remove that? Uh, uh, it's, it's like burden to them now. No, no, no. Don't let me be categorical about removal. Mm. But I can tell you one thing. Every injustice, every form of exploitation, an average Nigerian suffers will be addressed under the under in, this uh, Buhari, Buhari administration. You know, okay. administration. And we, we, it's we, just as simple as, as that. Simple as that. We, we, we've talked about uh, power, agriculture, Cultural, transportation. transportation let's housing. talk about housing. And that housing also, we talk about health because it's HH. Okay. So let's talk, quickly talk about housing. I know Lagos Homes, uh, Lagos is doing something about, I mean, doing a whole lot about creating or giving accommodation to Lagosians. Tell us about that. The Lagos Home is designed, it's a mortgage scheme designed to assist you know you know first time homeowners and they are in different ranges you have the one bedroom apartment you have the two bedroom apartment you have the three bedroom apartment basically they are meant for people who have not owned homes and the system is such that fulfilling some conditions you you ballot because there is never a time a government we, or we ever have enough houses to go around for everybody. So, the one of you know the plan of the uh, this outgoing administration is that they will be building two hundred houses every month, and I think we have stocks enough for that now, and we still going on. That uh, just go to their website, fill in the forms, you know, do the needful. You probably make a thirty percent deposit, you know. Then, they, when they ballot and you win, you start paying gradually back for a period of about ten years. As easy as that. It is that easy. Everybody that had won, you know, uh, any of this program, and I think one is also probably going to happen today. A draw will probably happen today. Okay. Yeah. yeah I think so, 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 you, so we're gonna have. Ho Homeowners again yes, today. Yes, homeowners are going to emerge again today, you know, and it, it, it's, it's a very good system. And um, that is recognizing the housing deficit, not within the state. There are a lot of people, when you see parents and children living in the same uh, 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 apartment, apartment and they are grown up, it's just an opportunity to say, oh, you can. Own your own place. And this is what Ambody also will, it will, will, continue will continue. It will continue. It was elected on the strength of continuity. And he told Lagosians, he's a man of his word. He's, he, he's, he's been part of the system. He told everybody that he will continue where BRF stopped. Okay. And uh, we should believe him for that. Trust okay. him. That is what he's going to do. We have some few minutes to go. I know we have a lot to discuss. But let's talk about this health. Uh, thing because I know Lagos State Government have, uh, has tried when it comes to mother, mother child, uh, health care, mm -hmm. and you're telling me uh, we, we're powering uh, uh, health facilities. Mm -hmm. That means it's, 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 it's a very good one then uh, for, for the people of Lagos. Mm -hmm. You see, the mother child uh, cares in the hospitals, we built eight, we have commissioned seven. The eighth, the eighth one is at Lekki. And what is what that one is the furnishings mm. that is the aspect so it's almost it's done now. it's almost done and I can tell you in the next couple of weeks somebody will commission that project mm. so you see health is a very very critical thing and don't forget too the renal and cardiac uh, uh, center in Bagada that's the force of its type in the whole of Nigeria. 
when you hear most of our people being shipped to Indian, from America, this thing, it is for, you know, this renal Yes, issue. I remember they were on this but show But again, also. now we are trying yeah. to host such, you know, you know a, a capital flight and put them in the country. The government has invested a lot of money mm. in building that up. So, so many things. When you go to the INK house, it's almost completed. I can also tell you in another couple of weeks too, Hambody will commission the INK house to the glory of God and to the service of humanity. Mm. So, to a very large extent, Lassoot <coughs> today is regarded for a very long time as the fastest growing teaching hospital in Nigeria. It has not lost that space. It is working and so many things are happening. A lot more still need to be done. We are not saying we a lot more still need to be done. Somebody has got a lot of work to do. As usual, Lagos is such a dynamic place. Lagos is a place where you have to be on your toes 24 hours. And uh, the Lagosians will not forgive me if I don't ask these questions. What is happening to Lazra? What is? The Lagos State res uh, is a resident registration. It yeah. is ongoing. And you see, this is a planning tool. It's a planning tool for, for government. It is ongoing and it will continue. If we have not registered, because again, when we spoke about housing, your last trial registration is one of those criteria. It's one of those conditions mm. Mm. that we won't you know, allow the government to you know, even listen to you. You must fill in your last trial number to be able to assess the portal. And it's still open. It's, it's open. They will close it when they want to do their draws. I think they close it five days or six days before their mm -hmm. draws. And as soon as the draws are over for that month, they open it again. They are in business. Okay. And uh, for, for the next few seconds to go, how would you rate uh, the outgoing administration? I know you're part of the administration. To be fair enough, how would you rate this administration and the advice for the incoming administration? Fantastic, that is. Very much. You see, it take, you know, you might not see it that much. And there is one problem again. When, if you are living in Okokomaiko, it's difficult for somebody to tell you about what is happening in the Kaija. Yes. But those of us in government, we know that everywhere, in all the 20 local governments and 37 local council development areas, there is no, there is none of those places you go to that you don't see the impact of this administration. And my own advice to the governor is that I've seen him roll up his sleeves. <laughs> he should just get ready. He should just stay the course. The template is out there. He has his own fantastic ideas coming in. Is to just build it. Lagos runs on the template. He should stay focused. There are a lot of distractions to in Lagos. Mm. He should just ignore those distractions and focus and remain focused. I'm committed. Thank you very much, Latif Raji. There's a lot to discuss, but uh, we've tried enough to even touch most of the areas. Is the essay to Governor Fashola on information and strategy. I want to say kudos to Governor Fashola and good luck to uh, Governor Elect Ambody. Thank, Thank you very you. much, uh, Latif welcome, Raji. And that's our package for today. And uh, happy Children's Day again uh, to our kids out there. And tomorrow I'll be here again to to discuss further. Uh, my name is Dakbo Aruwaje. Bye for now.